Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with Loserport.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeo, and on this quick video, we'll be discussing the announcement that Henrik Mikitarian will indeed miss the Europa League final. Arsenal released a statement today. They said, we are very disappointed to announce that Henrik Mikatarian will not be travelling with the squad for our UEFA Europa League final against Chelsea. We have thoroughly explored all the options for Mickey to be part of the squad, but after discussing this with Mickey and his family, we've collectively agreed he will not be in our travelling party. We have written to UEFA expressing our deep concerns about this situation. Mickey has been a key player in our run to the final, so this is a big loss for us from a team perspective. We're also very sad that a player will miss out on a major European final in circumstances such as these, as it is something that comes along very rarely in a footballer's career. Mikitarian will continue to be part of our preparations until we depart for Baku at the weekend. Really, really disappointing news. And um, UEFA, of course, as they always do, very quick uh, to respond. And this is what they had to say. Working alongside Arsenal FC, UEFA sought and received assurances regarding the player's safety in Azerbaijan from the highest authorities in the country. As a result of these guarantees, a comprehensive security plan was developed and given to the club. While the club acknowledges the efforts that UEFA and the Azeri government have gone to in this matter, we respect the personal decision not to travel with the player. I mean, it feels as though they're kind of making excuses, aren't they? And, and my take on this is, is simple, really. If you've put together a comprehensive security plan and given it to the club and Henrik Mkhitaryan's had a look at it and he still doesn't feel safe, then you've not done enough. You've not done your job. Go back to the drawing board and make sure that whatever you do put in place makes Mkhitaryan and his family feel safe enough because this is bang out of order. I've said this on previous shows. This is 2019. And to to have this situation where a professional footballer at the very highest level of the game cannot travel to a showpiece final, um, having worked so hard to get there because of where he's from, you know, this is a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. And for me, I'll go back to the original point. The final should never have been held in Baku in the first place. I know these things are decided well in advance. But the fact is, we knew about this issue, didn't we? When Mikitarian didn't go to the Carabag game earlier on in the season. So we know there's a problem there. And in my opinion, in the interim between that game against Carabag and this final, not enough has been done. I don't care if there's a comprehensive security plan in place. It's obviously not enough to make Mikitarian feel comfortable. And I totally understand his decision. No footballer would want to miss this kind of game. So that gives you an indication of how serious this issue is. Now, there have been lots of polls floating around Twitter this afternoon asking Arsenal fans whether they feel they'd be happy to see their club boycott this final. And whilst I totally get where you're coming from, and I've said it a couple of times as well out of anger, it wouldn't really do us any favours, would it? We're in a situation where we need to get back in the Champions League because of the financial reward and because of the status that it gives you in the modern game. And for that reason, we need this final. We need to win this final. And so to suggest that Arsenal should pull out is not really putting the interests of the club at first because would another club pull out? I don't think so. But I totally get where those people are coming from at the same time. We're talking about a country who won't allow people of a certain nationality in. Um, we're talking about a country with very poor transport links. Um, and, you know, on top of that, our fans are being told, those who have tickets, that they need to collect them from a hotel in Baku. I mean, that is ridiculous. I mean, just give them the tickets. I know for a fact that Spurs have been handing out their tickets at White Hart Lane today for the Champions League final. Why not do something similar? Why do fans have to go around Baku, which is already difficult enough to get to, looking for a hotel in order to pick up the tickets that they've already paid for? I think it's an absolute joke. I think the whole final is an absolute farce. But like I said, going back to the boycotting point, it isn't going to happen. And I don't think it should happen because we'll only be doing ourselves um you know, damage. And at the end of the day, UEFA aren't going to change, are they? It's all about money. And I think there are other ways of, of making a, a stand against them. And I think the big clubs need to get together and do something. The Barcelonas, the Real Madrids, the Bayern Munichs, because without those clubs, these UEFA competitions are nothing. They, they don't have the appeal that they have now without the likes of Real Madrid, Juventus, you know, Arsenal, Manchester United, Liverpool. These clubs are what make UEFA competition. UEFA doesn't make them. 
So, you know, there is something that can be done, in my opinion. There needs to be a stand. There needs to be protests from all the big clubs. But they all need to be singing off the same hymn sheet. And they need to do this um, right and, and, you know, flex their muscles. And we always talk about big clubs flexing their financial muscles and getting players in and being successful off the back of that. Well, now it's time to flex the, the muscles that they have in terms of influence on people and on their followers. Fans follow clubs, they don't follow UEFA. And it's time that the clubs put their foot down and made a stand against this disappointing treatment of football fans. And and I would be saying the same thing if it wasn't Arsenal. I have sympathy for the Chelsea fans too. Um, I have sympathy for some Spurs fans who are finding it really difficult to get out to Madrid. So, you know, this is a problem for all football fans. It's not a problem exclusive to Arsenal. Um, but unfortunately, on this occasion, we're the victims of it. Now, following the news breaking earlier on that Mkhitaryan wouldn't be making the final, he took to social media himself and he said the following, having considered all the current options, we had to take the tough decision for me not to travel with the squad to the UEL final against Chelsea. It's the kind of game that doesn't come along very often for us players and I must admit, it hurts me a lot to miss it. I will be cheering my teammates on, let's bring it home, Arsenal. So Henrik Mkhitaryan, you know, Staying classy in his in his social media post, um, you know, not naming names, not pointing fingers, just explained that given the current options, he had to take that tough decision and, and express his deep hurt at the fact that he's going to miss this game. And fair play to Henrik Mkhitaryan. And if he doesn't feel safe and his family don't feel safe, then it's absolutely the right thing to do. And I'll back his decision 100%. Unai Emery also spoke in front of the media today at London Colney and uh, when he was asked about the Mkhitaryan situation, this is what he had to say. It's bad news, but we cannot do anything for this issue. It's a very personal decision and we need to respect him. I don't understand the political problems now, but I must respect his decision. I spoke this morning with Mkhitaryan and it's a personal decision. I respect him. He wants to play to help us by being with the team. But they spoke, both him and his family, and decided not to go. I come from the Basque country and we had a big political problem that finished five or six years ago. And I can understand it is a very personal decision for his family and also thinking in their country. I cannot push him to come with us because I respect him. For me, it is very important if he is with us for the match to help with his quality and capacity. But this issue is not in my hands and I respect his decision 100%. So Unai Emery backing his man there. Uh, he also spoke to the media about various other issues and one of the other issues raised was the fact that not many Arsenal fans will be there. And uh, Unai Emery said this, I think our supporters want to come with us and enjoy with us in the stadium because there are not a lot of times you can play in a final in Europe. Every supporter wants to enjoy with the team in this country, but Baku is very far and they will have to fly because there is no possibility to drive there. It is expensive too. I prefer to be with them, to enjoy it with them, to have a big atmosphere with our supporters. Um, he was also asked how disappointed he was that the final is being held in Baku. And he said, we can't, we can't speak about that individually, but I think it's most important to think that we want to play a final against Chelsea and we want to show the possibility to win one title. Doesn't entirely make sense, uh, but you get what I mean. He was also asked, and I think this was probably a more tongue-in-cheek question, on whether the game should have been moved to Wembley. And Unai Emery was quick to sort of brush that one off as well and say, only this responsibility is with UEFA's people and we can't do anything about that. Um, so, you know, disappointment, I think, all round from Arsenal fans. And, and if I'm being honest, I think this whole scenario, the fact that it's in Baku, the fact that it's so far, the fact that it's so difficult and expensive to get to, the fact that the allocation was low and, and then all this Mkhitaryan stuff, in my view, it's kind of taken the gloss off a of final. And as a supporter, you should be really up for these kind of games and really buzzing. And I'm not saying that, you know, once the day comes, um, I won't be absolutely, you know, shitting bricks and nervous and, and hoping that Arsenal bring home the trophy. But what I will say is it has certainly taken the gloss off it a little bit for me. And I'd like to know what you guys feel about the whole situation as well. And of course, you can join us on our fans phone in on Thursday night at 9 p.m. UK time, that is. Uh, so if you want to take part, just DM us on Twitter at Chronicles underscore AFC. And we'll be back tomorrow with another 
uh, episode where we'll be talking to David Chidgey, a.k.a. Stanford Chidge, uh, the host of the Chelsea Fancast and a presenter over at Love Sport Radio. We'll be talking to him and getting his thoughts on this whole debacle and understanding how the Chelsea fans are dealing with the, these very same problems. Until then, guys, take care.